Yeah, well. well, good evening, folks. It's good to be with you here again. And we're going to open our meeting tonight by turning uh, to a good old gospel hymn, uh, 292. There is no love like the love of Jesus, never to fail nor fall, till into the fold of the peace of God he has gathered us all. A wonderful hymn, and it will stand and it will sing this unto the Lord. 292. There is no love like the love of Jesus, never to fade nor fall. and pure and free Oh turn to that love weary wandering soul Jesus pleadeth with before the Lord to pray and let each one of us pray that the Lord will bless us and that we will know his presence and his help as we come again to his precious word. Let us pray. Our gracious and our heavenly Father, as we bow humbly again in your presence, Lord, we thank thee tonight for the words of this hymn that we've been singing together. And we thank you, Lord, that there is no love like the love of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that that love reaches, Lord, to the lowest hell, not only from the uttermost to the guttermost, but thank God that the love of Christ, that it reached me and saved me by thy grace. Lord, thank you, Lord, that when the fullness of time had come, that God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem us again to thee. Lord, we thank thee today for the power that is in the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for sending your only begotten Son into this world to be the Savior of the world. 
Lord, you sent him not into the world to condemn the world, but Lord, that the world through him might be saved. And so, Lord, we cry to thee today that in this day and generation in which we live, that, Lord, we will see many again turning unto the Lord, that, Lord, that thou indeed will, Lord, reach out and snatch bronze from the burning, and, Lord, save them by your grace. Lord, we pray for the work here. We pray, O God, that thou will continue to guide it and to bless it, and we pray that thou will continue to add on to it daily such that shall be saved. We pray for the one who labors here, and we pray, Lord, for that touch upon his body, that, Lord, thou wilt clear him of this COVID and his family, and that thou wilt raise him again to a good measure of health and strength. We think, Lord, of that little verse in thy word, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings as eagles and run and not be weary. We thank, Lord, of others. We think of Peter. We thank, Lord, also of Cherith and many others who, Lord, have been affected by this pandemic, that, Lord, thou will draw wonderfully and graciously near to them. And may they know even tonight a touch from the Master's hand. Lord, as we looked at that verse this morning, that the Lord shall make thy bones fat. Lord, those who are weak in body, that thou wilt strengthen them in the inner man. Lord, we pray for our country and we pray for our land, that, Lord, thou wilt come, that thou wilt visit these wee shores of ours again, that, Lord, you'll come with healing in thy wings, with the revival, a quickening, Lord, awakening and a stirring. And, O God, that thou wilt visit our land again with thy great salvation. Lord, be with us tonight. Even though we may be small in number on the ground, we thank you, Lord, that where two or three are gathered together in my name, there art thou in the midst. Lord, come and be one of our number. Lord, fill this house with your presence. Fill it with your power and with your glory. And Lord, as we would go from this little place, that we will say in our hearts, truly, it was good for us to be here. For here, we have met afresh with the Lord. Remember those other works that are going on tonight where thou hast raised up a true and faithful witness, Lord, for thyself. Lord, bless the preaching of the word of God. Cause men and women to hear thy voice. Turn them, Lord, again unto thyself. And Lord, may heaven this night have great cause to rejoice over new names being written in the Lamb's book of life. Lord, bless us. Shut us in with thyself and take control. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, I could ask you please to turn to a well familiar passage of Scripture. And I want you to turn with me to John chapter 3. Uh, John chapter 3. And uh, we want to read uh, these first 18 verses of this wonderful chapter. I know we've maybe read it many times and we've heard it preached many times. But it's good to be reminded again of the great love of the Lord Jesus Christ and what the Lord means to each and every one of us who are saved and love him. John chapter 3 and verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man does do these miracles that thou dost except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, 
you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeneth, and I hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I, if I tell you heavenly things? And no man have ascended up to heaven, but he that cometh down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth in him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light, and their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifested, that they are wrought in God. Amen. We know the Lord will bless his word to all of our hearts. Good to have Malcolm here. And I'm going to ask Malcolm to come please and bring the necessary announcements to us. Thank you, Malcolm. Good evening, everyone. And thank you all for coming along. And a uh, special word of welcome to Stephen. Thank you for filling in, Stephen. And we enjoyed your word this morning, even though some of us got it online. It's, it's the same word. And uh, we look forward to what the, the Lord has put in your heart tonight, Stephen. Uh, Wednesday morning, 6 a.m., the prayer meeting starts again. And then Wednesday evening at uh, 7.30, James Maxwell uh, will be in charge of the meeting on Wednesday evening. Uh, next Sunday, the Bible class on the Sunday school, it recommences, 10.15, and it will be uh, an open Sunday school with Ruth Lavery will be uh, in charge of that one. Uh, next Sunday morning then, 11.30, the morning service, and 6.30, the evening service, and uh, Pastor, Pastor Purdy hopes to be in charge of those ones uh, next Sunday. And a big uh, congratulations to Marion and Jim, a uh, new addition to the family on Friday afternoon. So young uh, Jonah Stanley Edgerton came into the world and we trust that God's blessing will be upon Laura and Lynn and Marion and Jim and the rest of the family circle uh, with this new addition. So, and of course the, the near and far prayer letter is out on the hall table. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you again, Malcolm, for uh, giving us a warm welcome. It's good to be here. I certainly enjoyed and knew much of the Lord's help even this morning. And uh, we do trust that the Lord will bless you in this incoming year. And uh, may it be a fruitful year. And may it be a year that we will all uh, witness and testify to the wonderful saving and keeping power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to sing another hymn again in our hymn books, turning to hymn numbers, good old gospel hymn, uh, 335. There used to be a man, used to come out to Cloncore, I'm from Cloncore, and there used to be a man come out to the wee prayer meeting in Cloncore, the name of Johnny McAdam. And every time, whenever I got saved, it, that wee prayer meeting moved into my, my mother's house, it was in Cloncourt Orange Hall, and then it went down into Mrs. Uh, Aveline McAdams, the old McAdams mother's, 
And then it moved down into my mum's house, into our house in Clancore. And Johnny used to come in, and uh, Sammy was there too, and Eddie. And they used to come in. I remember Johnny getting the wee uh, Songs of Victory book, the wee blue book. And he used to pick this because this was his favourite hymn. And uh, whenever I was just thinking of it there, I was thinking of him today. You know, that man prayed for me. That little prayer hall, that little prayer meeting. And they prayed for this old sinner. And thank God, on July 1994, the Lord answered that prayer. And I'll never forget Johnny saying that day. He says, we prayed for you, boy. And the Lord saved you. And there was that little hymn. You remember him singing it many times in our house. There is a fountain filled with blood. Drawing from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stain. And we're going to stand and uh, we're singing. I think there's two or three different tunes to this, I think. So I let the organist and I'll follow you. <laughs> I'll follow the organist. We'll all stand, you know it well, and we'll stand and we'll sing 335 unto the Lord. Thank you. Redeeming 
Have your Bible, you turn again to that wonderful passage in John's Gospel, chapter 3, and uh, with the Word of God open, let us seek and ask the Lord for His help. Dear Lord, we thank Thee that this Lord's Day evening, that Lord, we have been brought afresh again to Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for what Calvary means to us. We thank you, Lord, that Calvary covers it all. We thank you for the blood that was shed. We thank you for the power that is in the blood. And we thank you, Lord, for the keeping power of the blood of Christ. And Lord, we thank thee tonight that not only you shed your precious blood, but thank God you rose again. Lord, we're so blessed tonight that Lord we're saved we're born again we're washed in the blood of Christ and Lord we thank you Lord that there's nothing can separate us from the love of Christ and so Lord we would pray for this little congregation that I would bless them and encourage them and Lord we would pray Lord for this little child Lord, that thou would save him early in life. Lord, save Jonah. And Lord, make him to be a man of God till his generation. And Lord, may he even have the joy of leading souls to Christ. Lord, close us in with thyself now. And Lord, speak to each one of our hearts. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 3 has to say is one of my most favorite passages uh, in all scripture. I don't know how many times you read it and study it and look at it. It always thrills and and encourages your heart. Because you know as we come tonight we come to look at a man who was well on, I would say, in years. I would say an old man. An old man of great experience. A man of great knowledge and wisdom. And yet, a man not saved. And you know, that can be said of many. In our wee province and land tonight, there are many Great men, great old men, men who have seen many changes in life, men who have seen things come and go, men with great knowledge and great wisdom, yet they're not saved. You know, I want to title this message tonight, the greatest message ever told. Because when we come to this wonderful passage of John chapter 3, here we have the name Nicodemus. And we have all tonight, and I know most of you here tonight, we have all heard this passage preached over and over again. And yet, I believe the Lord has something that ought to encourage us tonight as God's children. And you know, we we look at a man who is old in age, and I take heart in it. Why? Because it's teaching me tonight that there's no one too old or too hard for the Lord to save. And that ought to encourage us. And maybe you've been praying for a friend for many, many years. They've been in many gospel meetings. They've had many wonderful opportunities of to hear the gospel. Still, they're not saved. But when we come to look at this little character, it ought to encourage you and me. 
to keep praying on. Keep praying on. You see, whenever we come to John chapter 3, there's not only the man Nicodemus, but there's the Savior. Here's an old man, and he's, I don't know what age Nicodemus is, but he's privileged now because in his lifetime, he's now coming to have a meeting and an encounter face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. And that's something to think about. He has seen many things. He's heard many things. But now there's a stir that is beginning to happen within the land of Israel. There's a name that's beginning to go through every town and every village. And it's beginning to sound far and near. And it's now worked its way into the Sanhedrin. It's worked its way into the council of the Pharisees. And they're now beginning to debate, who is this man Jesus? That's some debate, isn't it? <laughs> I was thinking of this the other day when it'd be great if our councils, rather than talking about all the rubbish they do talk about, start to hear the stir about the Lord and the things of the Lord. Because it becomes, and we will see in a little moment or two, it actually became a division among them. Because when you go over to John's Gospel, chapter 7, and you read between verses 40 down to 53, it says there that there was a division beginning to happen among them. And many of the people, therefore, it says in, in verse 40, and many of the people, therefore, when they heard the saying, said of, of a truth. Do you see that? They have seen and witnessed for themselves the miracles of Christ and now they're beginning to say this is a prophet this is truth and then there are others it says in verse 41 if you look at it it says others said this is the Christ but some said shall Christ come out of Galilee you see how the Lord Jesus Christ, through how the flame of Christ is beginning to spread and people are beginning now to take note and they're beginning to watch and see what the Lord is beginning to do. I tell you, men and women, if ever we needed a move of God, surely it is today. We need this same stirring of the Lord in the land again that people will begin to see that this really is of the Lord. This is the Lord's doings and it is marvelous in our eyes. And then it says in verse, and they even turn to the scriptures. <laughs> Here's these Pharisees and they're hearing about the Lord's moving and the Lord's saving and the Lord's healing. And then it says in verse 42 of John 7, it says, have not the scriptures saith. <laughs> You know, they're, they're, for a while the book has probably been closed, but they're now hearing of Jesus of Nazareth and they're now beginning to search the scriptures and look back to the Old Testament prophets, how they have prophesied of the coming of the Messiah, the coming of the Lord, the deliverer for Israel. What a debate. What a discussion. It's beginning to take forth. And it says, Have the scriptures said that Christ cometh from the seed of David out of the town of Bethlehem where David was. And then we get this, verse 43. So there was a division among the people because of him, because of Christ. And then it says, And some of them would have taken him but no man could lay hands on him. And then it says, Then came the officers to the chief priests and the Pharisees. And Nicodemus, that's what he is. He's part of this great Sanhedrin. He's a Pharisee. He's a ruler of the Jews. <laughs> now you get the picture now, aren't you? You can see them all sitting, scratching their heads and trying to work this out. And the people bring it to the priests and they bring it to the Pharisees and they say unto them, 
Why have you not brought him? And the officers answered, Never man spake like this man. I think that's tremendous. Never in the history of life has there ever been a man speak like the Lord Jesus Christ. He was there at the beginning of the creation of the world. The Lord spoke. The Lord said, let there be light, and there was light. When they came to arrest him, he spoke, and they fell back as if they were dead. No man could touch him. And even his ministry, even his preaching, they were taken back with it. They could say, never a man speak like this man. We have never heard this before. And then they go on to say, and many of the rulers of the Pharisees believed in him. Isn't that wonderful now? They're beginning to believe. And how is it all coming about? It's all coming about by hearing the word of God. Christ is beginning to preach. He came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And he began to preach and teach about the kingdom of heaven. And they're beginning to believe. They're beginning to believe. And then it says, and this, pe- and th- and this people knowing not the law or the course, Nicodemus said unto them, here's the word Nicodemus, you get him here, Nicodemus said unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our law judge any man before he hear it? Before you can judge him, let him hear the word of God. And know not what he doeth. And then answered and said unto him, Art thou also a Galilean? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went on to his own house. See, they were baffled. But when Nicodemus this night came to the Lord, Men and women, the Bible says, and there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. Men and women, what a find. What a find Nicodemus found that night when he came face to face with the only begotten Son of God and the Lord begins to speak directly to one to one with this old sinner of the gospel, Nicodemus. And Nicodemus said, he says, Rabbi, we know. I'm not speaking again of the Sanhedrin. They've been talking about these things. They've been looking at his ministry. They've been seeing the acts and the miracles that he's been doing. And Nicodemus says, there's no man can do these miracles except God be with them. It's impossible. But you know something? The Lord didn't show Nicodemus a miracle. But the Lord pressed something very, very important upon his heart. And you will find it in verse 3 and verse 7. And Nicodemus, he said to Nicodemus, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, accept the man, be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he says in verse 7, Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must, you must be born again. You see, the old Pharisee, he knew there was something different about this man, Jesus. And Nicodemus wanted to see it for himself. He wanted to witness it. He wanted to go back into the Sanhedrin and testify whether he was the Christ or whether he was not. And the Lord says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the Lord pressed it upon Nicodemus' heart. Nicodemus, if you want to be in the kingdom of heaven, if you want to be a child of God, then you must be born again. 
There's urgency. You see, why was it an urgent matter? Why was it such an urgent matter that the Lord pressed this again and again upon the heart of Nicodemus that he needed to be born again? Well, one reason to this is time is short. Nicodemus, the Bible says in James chapter 4 that what is your life? It's only a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then it vanisheth away. Listen, men and women, Nicodemus maybe hadn't long to live. Nicodemus, time is short. And if you're going to be in the kingdom of heaven, then you need to be born again. There's a lovely verse in Psalm 90. If you turn with me please to Psalm 90, I'm sure you've read it many, many times. And as I read it this afternoon, just going over it, Psalm 90 and verse 5, Thou carriest them away as a, with a flood. They are asleep. They are in the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourish, it groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and it withereth. And then verse 9 it says, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. And then verse 10, the days of our years are three score and ten, if by reason of strength they are four score years. Yet is there sorrow and strength, uh, yet is there strength, labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. You see that? Do you see the urgency that the Lord showed to Nicodemus? He says, Nicodemus, your time is short and you need to be born again. But there's another reason why he showed him the urgency of it. Because death is near. You know, we've already read it there. What is your lifespan? It is three score and ten. And if, if by measure of strength, and you know, ladies and gentlemen, very few... Very few in this day and age live into their 80s and into their 90s. And it's sad that we are reading in this time that we're living in, that people seem to be dying younger and younger. Because we don't know how long we have in this world to live. Our time is short and death is near. Death is all around us. I think of the words of David when he quoted those words of David in 1 Samuel chapter 20. In verse 3, David said, there is but a step. Do you ever think of that? There is but a step between me and death. And whenever I was just thinking of that and preparing that, you know, think of that step. The next step that I could take in this world, I could be stepping out the door and I could be stepping out into eternity. That's all it is. In Psalm 39 and verse 5, it explains life as just a hand's breath. There's just a step between me and God and death. There's just a hand's breadth between me and death. My time is short. I don't know if I'll ever see the end of this incoming year. I don't know if I'll see another two years or three years. I don't know what time I've left. But Nicodemus, you need to be born again. Nicodemus, if you're to be in heaven, you must be born again. But it's not only that time is short, not only is death near, but judgment. There's judgment. And you see, the sad thing is this tonight. We live in an age, and I make no apology for this. I was actually saying this to a brother in the Lord this week. It's time we got back to the old-fashioned preaching of the gospel again. And men and women tonight, people think when you die, that's it. 
That's it. There is no judgment. There is no standing before a, a holy and a righteous God or these books being opened. My friend, the Bible says, as it is appointed unto men, once to die. After this, the judgment. And that's what sinners need to know tonight. That's what this ungodly world needs to know. That death is not the end, but death is the beginning of eternity. And where will you be in eternity? It's a solemn thought, but it's the truth. Men and women, time is running out for the ungodly. Time is running out for those who are without Christ. Death is drawing near and near to their soul. Every second, every minute of the day, they're getting near and closer to God's eternity. And to the great judgment that awakes. What a night. What a message Nicodemus is hearing as he's face to face with the Lord. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Your time is running out. Death is drawing near. And you're facing judgment. And men and women, that could be said of some of us tonight in this meeting who are still not saved. The Lord has been so good to us in 19 and, or 2021. The Lord has spurred us. He has given us an other Lord's Day evening. He has allowed us once again to be in under the sound of the preaching of God's word. And he has given you another opportunity that you might hear again. You must be born again. But you see, there's something else Nicodemus discovered that night when the Lord was speaking direct to him. Nicodemus, he couldn't get it. He says, how can a man be born when he is old? And you see, this is the proof that he was an old man. And yet God had been so gracious to him. God had spurred him many, many years. God had given him the wisdom. The Lord had raised him and allowed him to be in that position he was in. God had given him the wisdom and the knowledge and the strength. And yet, he says, but how? He says, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? You see, Nicodemus was looking at it in the physical side. And sadly, so many people, they, when they come to these verses in Scripture, they look at it in the eye of the flesh. Because the Lord said, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit, and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And when you and I were born into this world, we were born sinners. We were born with our back towards God. We were separated from God. We were born in sin. But the moment that we were born again of the Spirit of God, we were born of above. We were born of above. And we were born into the family of God. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That if you and I who are born again of the Spirit of God, men and women, we're born into the family of God. We're heirs and joint heirs with Christ. I've often used this illustration. You know, I've been blessed to have two children. And on the birth certificate is their mother and their father. And my children carry my DNA. And it doesn't matter what you will do with it. They're still my children. And you see, the moment you and I were born again of the Spirit of God, we were washed in the blood of Christ. And we're born again with the DNA of the Lord of Jesus Christ. And not a man or woman can change it. Some thought, isn't it? That's what it is to be born again of the Spirit of God. 
And Nicodemus is he's baffled. He's saying, Lord, how can these things be? How can a man be born again when he is old? Men and women, he missed the point. And what did he miss? Because the Lord said to him, and the answer to him in verse 10, he says, And Jesus said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel? <laughs> and knowest not these things? Now think of that phrase. Art thou a master of Israel? And knowest not these things? What was it that Nicodemus was missing? He missed the point about the blood. You see, the Pharisees were studiers of the law. And they, they studied the laws of Moses. They could have told you the Ten Commandments without even looking at them. They were great philosophers in the law. And they knew the law off by heart. They were the ones who tripped up the Lord on the law. They were able to say, it's not lawful for thee to do this on the Sabbath. Or if someone was caught in adultery, they were quick to quote the law. But they forgot about the blood. Because if they really studied the books of Moses, they'd have learned about the Leviticus law. And the Leviticus law is all about the blood. Because the Lord Jesus in the Leviticus law teaches that the life is in the blood. And it is the blood that maketh the atonement for the soul. And this old prophet, this old Pharisee, this old man, well versed in the law, he missed the, uh, the complete meaning of the sacrifice of the Lamb. For without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission for sin. There's none. And men and women, sadly, that's what's wrong today. There are people who could tell you verse after verse of the scriptures. They could, they're catechized, they're baptized, they're, they're de denomination, they're everything. But they forget about the blood. Don't preach the blood. Just give us a little soft gospel. And he missed it. He missed the point and the importance of the blood. Listen to what Moses said. He says, choose you this day. Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 30, 19 and 20, he called heaven to witness it. He said, I call heaven and earth to witness this day. Choose you this day whom you may serve. If you choose Christ and God, blessing will follow. But if you refuse and reject the Lord, then cursing, and well, cursing will follow. Oh, men and women, in 2022, don't miss the importance of the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Oh, Nicodemus, you're a master in Israel and you know not these things. But you know, as we come, lastly, there's something else. The Lord didn't just leave him there. And that's the beauty of it. I preached uh, John 3 and 16 a few weeks ago over in Banbridge for Ronnie and I took that as my text, John 3 and 16. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, you can't understand John 3 and 16. I think I actually preached it in the CWU that night as well when I came back. You can't understand the grasp John 3, 16 until you fully understand that word perish. Here was an old man he had sought out the Lord. The wonderful thing about Nicodemus is this. He came. That's the wonderful, amazing thing. He came. 
And he came by night. And the Lord taught him. And the Lord didn't leave him in the dark. But the Lord showed him the way. See that? The Lord didn't say, Nicodemus, go home and read it. No, the Lord showed him the way. Because the Lord brought him back to the scriptures. And the Lord brought him back into the Old Testament. And the Lord said, Nicodemus, you remember when Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness? Yes, Lord. He said, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And the Lord brought him back to that passage of Scripture. And the Lord said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, as Moses lifted the serpent up in the wilderness, all they who were bit by the serpent, if they didn't look to the brazen serpent, they would die, Nicodemus. They would die. But if they looked by the eye of faith and believed, Nicodemus, they would live. And just as Moses lifted that serpent up in the wilderness, even so, Nicodemus, must I, the Son of God, be lifted up between heaven and earth, that all they who look unto me, Nicodemus, shall be saved. Because he said, Nicodemus, soon I'm going to the cross. I am he who the prophets spoke of who would come, who would become the sacrificial lamb, who would go to the cross of Calvary and bear the sins of many upon the cross. I am the sin bearer, Nicodemus. As it says in Isaiah 53, and it pleased the Lord to bruise him. For the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. And all the Lord brought Nicodemus to the cross. And men and women and young people tonight, that's how we ought to preach. That's what we ought to teach. Yes, teaching men and women and young people that they're born sinners and they're born without God and that time is running out and if they die in their sin, then they face the great judgment, the great separation from God. But thank God there's a way back. There's a way back from the dark paths of sin and it's Calvary's cross where you have to begin. And the Lord showed him so simply and so plainly. He says to this old man, and I can see him whether he was sitting in his house or in a wall of Jerusalem or wherever, he was just sitting, him and the Lord. And the beautiful, <laughs> just him and the Lord. And the Lord says, Nicodemus, if you want to be in heaven, if you want to be with me, in Nicodemus, you have to believe. You have to believe. For God sent not his son into the world. And I love that verse. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But he sent them into the world that the world through him might be saved. And then he showed him the love of God. For God so loved the world. You can't measure it. I wish I had more time, but I don't. You can't measure that wee word so. And that's why we teach the children, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? It's so high, you can't get over it. It's so low, you can't get under it. It's so wide, you can't get around it. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? so great a love that God gave think of that men and women how much did God love you and me I'll tell you he emptied heaven for you when he gave his only begotten son to go and to die 
on an old rugged cross. And you see what it says there? That whosoever believeth in him. I love these words. You underline them well. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen. What's the difference? To eternal life. And everlasting life. Everlasting damnation. Everlasting hell. Everlasting separation from God and from Christ. But what is it to be in Christ? What is it to be saved and born again? To have everlasting life. Eternal life. Life forever with the Lord. That night, Nicodemus heard the greatest story ever told that God sent his only begotten son into the world and Nicodemus through him he could be saved. And that night, Nicodemus saw and believed and was born again of the Spirit of God. Amazing, isn't it? An old man, full of experience and wisdom, yet missing the crucial point. Nicodemus, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission. Don't miss the cross. Don't miss what Christ has done for you. You say to me, preacher, what do I have to do to be saved? Believe. Not with the head, but with the heart. Believe, one, that Jesus died on the cross. Believe, two, that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth me from all sin. Believe three, not only did he die and shed his blood, but that he rose again. That he's alive. And believe that he's coming soon. Oh, what a message. Oh, Nicodemus heard that night. That for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, is that not what our world needs to hear tonight? It's still the same old message. 2,022 years as that old man sat with the Saviour and he heard the Saviour teach him the way. And he heard the Saviour tell him, Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, you must, you must be born again. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my prayer that in this incoming year that we will see again the hand of our God at work raising dead sinners to life through the power of the gospel. Thank you for being here. We've known much of the Lord's presence and the Lord shall guide thee continually. And may this be the year that he will guide us, that we will see men and women and young people born again of the Spirit of God, living to testify and to tell it around and tell it about that Jesus Christ is the mighty, the mighty to save. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts tonight. We're just going to close with a, a little word of prayer.
and ask the Lord that he would bless us as we would separate one from the other. Lord, we thank thee tonight for bringing us afresh again to Calvary. And Lord, where do we begin? But Lord, from the depths of our soul, we would say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. We thank you, Lord, for that moment in our life when, Lord, the Spirit of God awakened us to our great need, that we saw, Lord, that we were perishing, that we saw, Lord, that we were without Christ and without hope and without God. And yet we thank you for that great message that came ringing in our ears. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. And Lord, we pray that in this incoming year, and especially, Lord, in this house, that, Lord, you will raise the tide. Lord, the tide might be out, but, Lord, you can bring it back in again. And we pray, O God, that thou will bring the tide and the waves of salvation back again into this little congregation, and not only into this house, but, Lord, across the land. May every faithful preaching house of the gospel as Jonah cried in the belly of the whale, salvation is off the Lord. Lord, separate us in thy love and with thy blessing. And Lord, take us all to our homes in safety. For we pray and ask that in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.